Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our live session with one of Schneider Electric Smart Factory, which has been appointed a sustainability lighthouse by World Economic Forum in Lexington, US. My name is Agata Gronek and I will be your host today. And together with me, I have Hennet, who will be our guide, show us around and then answer your questions. Hi, Kenneth. How are you today? Good. Hi, Agata. How are you? I'm fine. I'm looking, really looking forward for our tour today. Okay, great. So I want to welcome everybody to Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, we're at the facility here, uh, approximately half a million square foot uh, in the state of Kentucky in the United States. My name is Kenneth Labhart, and I'm the Director of Innovation at Smart Factory for the Supply Chain Performance Group in North America. I'm joined uh, behind the camera here by Paige Van Zant Moody who is our EcoStructure Ambassador for the facility. Now, I'd like to take you on a little pre-recorded tour here and show you some of the factory. We're gonna play a video here in a moment. And what I'd like you to take away from that video is how employee empowerment, uh, particularly in the areas of continuous improvement and also in sustainability, is really at the heart of a smart factory transformation. When the people are empowered to use those digital tools to make real-time accurate decisions on the factory floor, you really begin to win. So please enjoy this video and we'll come back here, here in a moment and uh, we'll take some live questions and answers. Hello and welcome to Lexington, Kentucky. The facility's construction finished in 1957. The year 2023 will be the 66th year of production in the facility. And our Smart Factory program, which started in the year 2017, focused in on uh, digital transformation and standard priority facilities driving standardization around the globe in facilities uh, like the plant that you see here in front of us. We were honored in the year 2020 to have the World Economic Forum award us the Advanced Manufacturing Lighthouse designation for our end-to-end -end digital transformation. And in the following year, the plant was awarded the Sustainability Lighthouse for our commitment to digital energy management, our digital energy management strategy. We manufacture product in the facility here across two shifts of production with approximately 600 employees. And we manufacture safety switches and we manufacture load center. We're heavily vertically integrated and we're heavily automated. In the fact that we make nearly 3 million of these devices a year and approximately 800,000 of these devices from a raw coil of steel. So how did we do this in an aged facility? No matter where you're at in your digital transformation or your smart factory program, it is vital to realize and understand that empowerment of the employees with digital tools is the heart of a digital transformation. Giving your employees the ability to make the right decision at the right time is critical, especially in the area of continuous improvement. Now the employees in the processes around us here are in assembly processes. They're using digital tools to identify the performance of the operation, to understand the roadblocks and receive escalated and on response for the uh, roadblocks to their production. And they're also using digital applications to manage the resources that are assigned to knock down or kill those roadblocks to production. Now, once this digital manufacturing execution system was standardized on these lines, we now have standardized data sources that we can use with much higher level business intelligence applications to really drill down with analytics to tell us trends in our performance and help us kill those roadblocks. These are the same types of digital systems in use and being driven as standard as part of our smart factory program at over 200 facilities throughout the world. Also, employee empowerment is vital in a sustainability plan or in your digital energy management strategy. The ability to understand and use data regarding the, the, the energy usage in your facility is vital to reducing your energy spend in your facility and increasing your energy efficiency. The paint system in this facility is the largest consumer of natural gas in North America in our company. The conveyor system over my head is feeding at any given time 7,000 parts from the fabrication department through that paint system and on into the assembly process. 
it is vital that we understand exactly what energy is being used at what time and where in the facility. We utilize a system of connected meters, edge and cloud software applications to visualize that energy usage and to study that energy usage. At any given time in this facility or in this process, I have the ability to understand exactly what energy is used by component or by process or even by subcomponent. We look at that energy usage and we build a digital energy management strategy that we can attack and execute to drive energy efficiency and reduce waste in our system. At a regional level, we also pull that information for those EBS applications into a cloud application where we have the ability to compare plant to plant across the entire region. It's the combination of these digital tools that have enabled the Lexington facility to deliver 26% in energy savings uh, since the maturity of these tools. And more importantly, at a regional level, we've delivered over $6 million in energy savings. So we're very proud of that as part of our commitment to sustainability. I want to thank you for joining us today. I realize the visit was brief, but I want you to leave with the understanding that it is vital, that empowering your employees is vital to the success of your digital transformation journey. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kenneth, for a very interesting tour. And before we move on to Q&A session, I will allow myself to ask you the question which is frequently asked by our customers. Uh, what struggles did you have uh, about uh, workforce uh, empowerment? Yeah, thanks. I, I got it's a good question and something that uh, you're absolutely right. It comes up in a lot of topics and 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 we faced some struggles and made some mistakes, particularly around uh, re-engaging employees. And let me let me explain. Um, the basis of, of of a digital transformation or having employees use digital tools take away their fear. So you have to be diligent uh, in, in 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 engagement with that employee and and making them understand that they can't break the digital tool. Nothing that they can do that's something you can't back out of or you can't recover from. Uh, and initially, early on, we probably did not put enough stress or emphasis on re-engaging that process over and over to take that fear away from the employees. However, once we realized that and we could adjust for that, we began um, reoccurring uh, technology talks with our employees, reoccurring engagement with our employees with training uh, for the digital devices, and more importantly, face-to-face -face daily time uh, with the employees on a reoccurring basis when fear crept in with the use of a digital tool. And that was very important to us, but that's something that we we definitely struggled from the beginning, and, and we found that once once the employee truly lost that fear and realized that the digital tool made their job easier, um, from that point, the scaling grew rapidly uh, and employees adopted and began to use those digital tools. Thank you so much. And I will give the voice now to the audience. Has anyone any question? Okay, so maybe I will uh, have another one for you. Um, you were um, you were talking about digital transformation, but it seems a little bit overwhelming on the uh, in the factory. Please tell us what is the first step to take in. Sure, I can give you the example of here of what we've done in Lexington with that first step. Also, what we've done uh, in uh, 20 other facilities here in North America and begin that process. And I think it's critical that you start small, okay, and start quickly. As an example here in Lexington, Kentucky, you saw in the video, we mentioned the, uh, the, the large conveyor system that runs through the ceiling of the plant. Now, traditionally, the count values, the work in process, the whip, count values of the products that were on that conveyor system 
making their way from the fabrication group to the final assembly group through the painting process, those WIP values were siloed, meaning that if a supervisor or a manager wanted to know um, how much of a particular product they had in route to their assembly line, they had to run to a computer. They had to run a report. They had to go back to the office. They had to check. And what we did here at the beginning following that move quick, um, uh, move fast uh, philosophy is that we took six of those material counts and we connected those six material counts to the Aviva Insight platform. And we gave those operators, those supervisors, those managers, the ability to view that data anywhere on their mobile devices. We also gave them the ability to set alarm limits so that they could react faster when they saw those material counts languishing or dropping below a, 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 an alert level. So now a manager, a supervisor, a leader uh, doesn't necessarily have to have their mind on running that report or jumping back to the office to get their computer, get a push notification on a mobile device that says, you have trouble pending. Uh, and in that case, they were able to take their people and use them elsewhere, uh, build a different product, uh, possibly lunch or breaks earlier. Uh, and that delivered us immediate labor productivity improvement uh, in that area. So once we saw, or once the, the, the plant resources saw how easy it was to connect those shop floor signals, uh, critical to health of equipment, critical to process, critical to quality, uh, the engineers and the technicians uh, scaled rapidly. We went from those six data points to over 1,500 data points uh, in less than 18 months in the facility. Now we, now we find our quality teams, our automation control teams, they're monitoring things like screwdriver torque. They're monitoring, monitoring pressures of equipment, vibration. And we've even gone now as far as to integrate that to our maintenance management system such that a threshold violation of a floor signal uh, that's streamed in real time to the Aviva Insight platform triggers a maintenance work order on our management system such that we have a record. So um, I realized that was a long answer, uh, but the most important thing is that started with a small step, okay? Pick a problem and solve it quickly to show the power of the digital tool. And what is next in your digital journey? <clears throat> Another good question. So we've, uh, so we've spent our smart factory program here in North America started in uh, the latter half of 2017, the beginning of 2018. We've invested heavily in that type of um, uh, connectivity, all right, both capital and also resources in terms of connecting our factory floors throughout North America. Uh, as a result, we've driving those standards of IoT connectivity, the identification of those critical to health signals, critical to process, critical to quality signals. We've got a large store of data now that, um, that, that, that mimics or reports the status of our process in real time. Now we're taking the step to use artificial intelligence, uh, particularly machine learning, okay, to begin using those data sets and to train uh, models that look for anomalies in equipment health, models that are also capable of optimizing quality processes uh, in the facility. So we are really look to, build, to look to build upon that foundation. Now, the, as we become better at that, and we start to see multiple, we start to scale the benefit of machine learning across the company, the infrastructure to handle that type of real-time data from the factory floor is, of course, a concern. So currently, we're collaborating with NTT here in Lexington, uh, and we've actually implemented the first private 5G network here in the facility. Now, we're exploring that private 5G network now in the facility to understand the differentiators over our traditional Wi-Fi. We're exploring use cases in the facility uh, with that 5G technology that utilize uh, video feeds, artificial intelligence analysis of video, of video feeds for asset help. And we're, we're 
We're collaborating to understand how it can support the bandwidth uh, and also the reliability that we need for those types of systems. So we started with that foundation of IoT and standard systems for connecting our, our factory floor, the definition of the signals that describe our assets, our health, and now we're trying to climb that analytic ladder and we're heading for that holy grail of the prescriptive analytics where we begin to affect our processes for improvement. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gata. Thank you, Kenneth. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you.